Hi everyone, it's October 31st, so you know what that means, it's Halloween! I think Halloween's like my favorite holiday, so I'm really excited when it comes around. I don't do really anything, um, I don't go to parties, and I don't really get to dress up because it always seems to be I'm on call or I'm working on Halloween, so not much fun. <laughs> but um, I mostly hand out candy. Um, I don't get matrix treats, treaters at my house though, so a lot of the time I'm just watching Halloween movies, and last year I watched Nightmare on Elm Street. I watched all of them. I didn't know they had that many. Um, as far as the storyline got, the most more ridiculous it got, but this year I watched Poltergeist, and that's something I've actually never watched. I think I saw the remake when it came out and then I did I've seen like snippets of the first movie I've never really sat down and actually watched it it's just not something that kept my attention um, and that's pretty much stuck with me the entire time because I watched all three of them in one day and that was probably a mistake but I like the second one better than the first and the third one was just I don't even know but something I did not know is that there's a poltergeist curse I learned this, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. In the spirit of Halloween, we're going to talk about a curse that's on a movie set. And before we get started, look at these. Aren't they adorable? They're little coffins. It says Unus Honest. And if you know, you know. If you don't know what Unus Honest is, you missed a great year. Um, so Unus Honest means one year, by the way. Uh, that's a different video completely. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about the Poltergeist curse. And if you see me looking down, I'm going to look at my notes because I want to make sure that I'm not just making stuff up. Um, so the Poltergeist, if you know nothing about it, it first aired in 1982. So that's when it was released in the theaters. It's directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, it's about this little girl and her family. She has two, she has an older sister and a brother and her mom and dad. And they live in this new house, new subdivision area. They were one of the first settlers and dad works for the realtor company. Um, one day she starts talking to these spirits that are in the TV through the TV static. And this movie is mostly known for the statement where the girl goes, they're here. And then the first one, and the second one she says, they're back. And then I think in the third one, the spirit actually says, I'm back. I don't remember. But anyway, um, so she's sucked into the closet and she seems to be living in the TV. She's in the spirit world. So, um... The family eventually finds out that their house was built on top of graves that the um, company that bought the land and built all the houses, they took the headstones down, but they left the bodies there. So their house is cursed. I don't know why all of a sudden it just started happening because it's not like the family just moved in um, and they're building a pool, which as a fear director, I have so many arguments against what I was watching because it basically they did a 10 foot pool and they even talked about how it's 10 feet deep and the excavator did not dig up any bodies they were deeper than 10 feet and the time period that they claimed these bodies would be there um they would have been found <laughs> a long time ago because they were hand dug graves and there's no way they went deeper than 10 feet with a shovel so and I do know that they add some dirt to lots when they get um, when they get to building. They do add dirt, um, but I just I call BS, okay? <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, there is like I said a poltergeist curse, and basically every movie has someone that died shortly after filming was completed. So the first one in 1982, the first person to die was Dominic Dune, and she was the daughter, Dana. She's the oldest daughter. She's never even really there. Um, she's just kind of there when plot is convenient for it uh, to remind you, oh yeah, you have a kid. And then in the second movie, obviously she's not there because she died. I didn't know that she died before I watched the second movie, so I'm like, didn't you have a third kid? You guys are acting like your kid didn't even exist. Like, I'm assuming that if you're watching the show when the second one came out, you knew that she died, so you knew that she wouldn't be there. But in the storyline, they never explained why she wasn't there. Like, it could be implied that she was at college or something, but it was weird. But like I said, I didn't know she died. So, after filming The Poltergeist 1, Dominic was murdered by her boyfriend um, and at her home. So she died. 
The second movie, Poltergeist 2, came out in 1986. This is when two actors died after filming. The first actor is the man that played the, um, he's the cult pastor leader. So he's part of a cult. And if you don't know anything about the second one, you find out that he also and his family was in like a tunnel that's even deeper than the uh, original graves. And this is where he led his cult to, and he, convinced them that it was the end of the world and so they all went into this bunker and just sang songs and prayed to whoever they were following and no one died on the day that he said they were going to die so they all just like laid there and died because he wouldn't let anyone leave um so that's who he is he is played by and i'm looking at my notes here julian beck and in 1983 he was diagnosed with stomach cancer um and so he was still struggling with it during this filming. Um, and then after the movie was released in 1986, he died. So you've had Dominique that died in part one. You have um, Julian Beck that died in part two. Also in part two, there is a actor named Will Sampson. And he's actually been seen in a lot of movies. So I'm surprised he's dead. I didn't know he died. Um, he played Taylor. He was a, Nash, a Native American, and they called him a sh shaman. Um, and in real life, he was a medicine man. So he's basically playing himself, um, with a little bit of theatrics with it, of course. So he died shortly after the movie was released, released because he had a double lung and, um, let's see, lung and heart transplant, which of course, when you're replacing th pretty much three, cause lungs are two and hearts one. So if you're replacing those organs all at once, your survival rate is very low. If you know anything about transplants, if you're, the more you take out to replace, the more likely you are to have a rejection. He died in the surgery to get those. Um, so his survival rate was low. Um, so it wasn't much of a shocker that he passed away and neither was it for Julian Beck because he was also sick for a long period of time, but they both died shortly after wrapping up the scene. So that's part two. Part three is when Carol Ann, which is the little girl that was um, taken over by the spirits in the first movie and the second movie. Because the second movie, the um, cult guy is trying to get a hold of Carol Ann. The third movie, the cult guy comes back. And you can tell that it's a different person. And it was like really obvious it was a different person. And I didn't know once again that the guy had died. I didn't do any research until after I was finished watching the films. So things kind of make more sense now that people were missing and people weren't there or they were replaced. Um, so he was obviously replaced and she's living in Chicago with her aunt and uncle and um, cousin because she's going to a gifted school, but really it seemed like a school, if you have problems, you go there to be evaluated because there's this weird therapist. It was weird. I didn't understand it. it. They didn't explain things very well. And the mom and dad are not in it at all. So I wonder if they died, but they didn't die. Um, at least not then. So 1988 is when the third movie is released. Heather O'Rourke, which is the girl who plays Carol Ann, she died in um, February of 1988. The show or the movie was released in June of 1988. So she died before it was released. And the production never said a word about her dying. And like I watched the DVD, they never had like in loving memory of Dominique in the second movie. They never did loving memory of um, Julianne and Will in the third movie. Like, even if, like, this happened after production, I thought they would at least do In Loving Memory or something because they were on the set and they were main characters. So I was surprised to see that Heather O'Rourke didn't have one either. So I don't know what that's about. But she died. Um, she was 12, I think. 12 or 13. She was almost 13 if she wasn't already. And she died because she had a bowel obstruction that was diagnosed incorrectly as Crohn's disease. So she was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987 and they were treating her for that. It wasn't getting better. It got worse. Um, I read that she's had some um, heart issues, like heart attack issues because of the sepsis that ultimately took her life. So she had a bowel obstruction. They went to surgery to correct it. She did not survive through the recovery due to sepsis. So she died. And that is the last person that died shortly after filming the show. So there is this thought that there is a curse 
from the um, people who work there or was on the set. Now, there's an interesting thing that I read, and it was that um, the lady that played the mom, and her name is Jo Beth Williams, um, in the first movie and the second movie, uh, she reported that Spielberg actually wanted and did use real human bodies or skeletons instead of plastic fake ones because it was cheaper. Now, this has never been officially verified. Like, no one's really looked into it. Spielberg's never made a comment about it. I tried to find something that verified yes or no. Couldn't find anything. But she swears up and down that the skeletons that we saw were real. And it's amazing to me how those would be cheaper than plastic ones. Because today, um, if you were trying to get a full body skeleton or even a skull that's real, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money because I went to mortuary school and we had a full human skeleton in class. And he was a pretty penny. So I can't imagine <laughs> what they paid for all those skeletons because there was quite a bit there. So I don't know if it's for sure or not, but she swears them down is true. So that's where the thought comes that there's a curse because they used real human bodies on set. Um, and the man that was played by Will Sampson, he, like I said earlier, is a medicine man in real life. And I read that they often saw him like saying chants um, when he was leaving set and he even did a exorcism on the set after filming one night because it was too intense for him and so how do you think that made the people feel that work there <laughs> they're like the medicine man thinks this place is cursed <laughs> and he's doing an exorcism this is not good so that's where um, I thought it was an interesting like scary story that the poltergeist actually has a curse that follows it. I don't know if it's true. I don't know how I feel about it. It just seems like a lot of coincidences as well. If you're a coincidence person, it just seems like a lot of coincidences going on there. Um, now, like I said, in the second movie, the two guys were obviously already sick. So I don't know. But interesting to think about. And it's a creepy topic for Halloween. So, hey. I thought it was cool. And also, I want to remind you that Halloween is for everyone. It's not just for kids. So if you do have a teenager that shows up at your house saying trick-or-treat, give them the candy. Give them the candy. They picked going trick-or-treating instead of going to TP somebody's house. Instead of going to a party and drinking and being irresponsible and possibly getting killed because they're drunk driving or something or they're being stupid. They're not doing drugs. They picked going trick-or-treating. Give them the candy. Come on. <laughs> Don't, don't make them feel bad. Don't single them out. Just say, here's your piece of candy. Let them go. Don't make a big deal about it. Okay? Jeez. And if you are celebrating today, be safe. Be smart. Be responsible. <laughs> I don't think I should have to tell you this, but there's people that need to hear that. So please be safe, responsible. Enjoy your Halloween. I hope you get plenty of treats and not many tricks. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.